Hello. Uh, today we are going to consider a converging nozzle. In other words, uh, there will be no diverging section. And more specifically, we're going to look at the effect of back pressure uh, on the, at the exit. And this is the situation that we have in the tank discharge. So if we come over here and we look at the diagram that I have here, uh, I've drawn a diagram here and we've drawn our, our uh, control volume that looks like this, these dotted lines right here. So far upstream, we have the pressure in the reservoir, so the subscript R stands for the pressure in the reservoir, as does the subscript zero. So the pressure in the reservoir is at stagnation pressure, temperature in the reservoir is stagnation temperature, and the velocity in the reservoir uh, we consider to be zero. And so then we have at the exit over here, right at the exit of the flow, we have what's called uh, the exit pressure, and then just downstream of that we have what's called the back pressure. So the back pressure is what's outside of the control volume. And if we look at the pressure distribution in the nozzle, and we'll look at several different cases here. First we're going to look at when this back pressure over here equals the stagnation pressure. Okay, so when the back pressure equals the stagnation pressure, we have a horizontal line here. There's no change in the pressure distribution because there's no flow. There's zero flow, so there's no change in the pressure. If we reduce the back pressure to below stagnation pressure, but we have it above P star, and you may remember that P star is the pressure uh, when the Mach number is 1. So if the Mach number was 1, we'd have P star. If the back pressure is greater than that pressure, then we'll have a pressure distribution that will look something like this. The pressure will be decreasing in the nozzle, and then it'll come out, and you'll have isentropic flow, and it'll come out and be uh, whatever the back pressure is. Now, we'll continue to lower that back pressure till we get to uh, what's called, till the back pressure equals P star. And that's when we have our greatest pressure uh, decrease in the uh, nozzle. And so it'll come all the way down to here. Now, if we lower the back pressure any less than the uh, P star, because uh, the pressure at the, if the pressure at the exit is P star, uh, there's no way to transmit that information upstream that we've lowered the back pressure any further because we have sonic conditions at the exit. So the back pressure can drop below P star, but we're not going to change anything inside the nozzle itself. We can't change the conditions inside the nozzle. So the lowest pressure that we could have at the exit here is P star, and anything lower than that would have to be outside the control volume downstream of this exit session at, at uh, P star. And we can take the back pressure all, down, all the way down to zero, but we're not going to change the pressure inside the uh, nozzle. So let's go to our second slide here. When the back pressure is less than or equal to P star, we refer to this condition as choke flow. And in this case, we have sonic conditions at the exit. Any, further re uh, any further reduction in the back pressure has no effect in the nozzle. So we, one of the things we want to get is the mass flow rate. So the mass flow rate is given by this equation here. We have mass flow rate is equal to rho VA. Well, we can write the density as P over RT. We'll leave the area like it is. And then the... Uh, there's a term missing here. That should, there should be a Mach number right here. So we have the Mach number times the square root of gamma RT, which is the speed of sound. So if we rearrange that, we have uh, PAM times the square root of gamma over RT. So that is our mass flow rate. All right, so we're gonna, we wanna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in terms of the stagnation dish conditions. So we'll use our Mach number relations and we'll substitute for um, pressure and, uh, and temperature. So we end up with the equation, the, mo uh, the mass flow rate is equal to P0 times AM square root of gamma over RT0, and then all this term down here. And then if I, um, let's pull up the next slide. So I've just rewritten the equation at the top of the page here. 
So we've now written the mass flow rate as a function of the stagnation temperature and stagnation pressure area and Mach number. So everything just depends on the stagnation conditions now. Since the mass flow rate is constant everywhere, because we're considering steady conditions, we can evaluate the mass flow rate anywhere. The maximum possible Mach number in the nozzle is 1, and this is going to occur at the throat. So that means the max mass flow rate that we can have is this term right here, where I've substituted uh, 1 in for the Mach number, and we have this term right here. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So I've rewritten the, just rewritten that equation again. So the maximum, uh, so here's the mass flow rate again. This is the maximum mass flow rate that we can have in the nozzle. For a particular gas, if the flow is choked, the mass flow rate depends on the upstream stagnation conditions and does not depend on any downstream conditions. So when I say a particular gas, that means it's going to refer to, uh, the things that re uh, refer to gases are gamma and R. So uh, if we don't change these, everything depends just on the upstream stagnation conditions. And now we can control the mass flow rate by controlling the exit area, the stagnation pressure, or the stagnation temperature. Now, at the exit plane, if the flow is not choked, the pressure in the exit plane is equal to the back pressure. But once the flow chokes, the pressure in the air exit plane becomes P star, and as long as the flow is choked, that pressure at the exit plane will be P star, even though the back pressure is less than P star. So we need to know if the flow is choked or not, so we'll know what relation to use. So how can you tell if the flow is choked? Okay, well we're going to use the Mach number relation for pressure, and we're going to set the Mach number equal to 1. So here's the Mach number relation right here for stagnation pressure and static pressure. So I'm going to solve this for a Mach number of 1, and I get this expression right here. If we're talking about air, gamma is 1.4, and so we can say P0 over P star, we'll plug that in, we get 1.8929. Now usually people that work in this business uh, do the reverse, the inverse of that. They'll, they'll look at P star over P0, and if the pressure ratio at the exit is 0.5283, then we have choke conditions at the exit. And that's a number that most people that work in the business, they have memorized. So one way you can remember it is, as a rule of thumb, if the gas is air, if the exit pressure is about half of the stagnation pressure, then the flow is choked. It's not exactly half, but it's pretty close. Now, take note of this. Gamma is equal to 1.4 for air. If the gas is some other gas besides air, be sure to use the correct gamma. For example, if the gas is helium, gamma is going to be 1.667. If it's carbon dioxide, gamma is 1.289. Gamma depends on the molecular structure. Uh, for diatomic gases such as oxygen and nitrogen, uh, the gamma is going to be 1.4. Now, because air is almost all nitrogen and oxygen, uh, so it, air is essentially a diatomic gas, so gamma is going to be 1.4 for air at normal temperatures. Now for monotonic gases, which includes gases like argon and helium, and there is some argon, in, uh, there is argon in the atmosphere, but just a small amount, and we use helium sometimes, the gamma is going to be 1.667. So if it's a monatomic gas, you don't really have to look it up, it's going to be 1.667. But if you have more complex molecules, and that would include carbon dioxide, you're going to have to look up uh, gamma in a table. Now, one good way to uh, discuss this is by doing an example, so you can see how to use this. So I have an example, and this is going to be our converging nozzle example. And in this example, we have air, which is at 145 psi A absolute, and 1100 degrees Fahrenheit enters a converging nozzle with a velocity of uh, 492 
feet per second, which is about 335 miles an hour. And it says, determine the mass flow rate through the nozzle with a throat area of 7.7 square inches when the back pressure is 100 PSI, part A is 100 PSIA, and part B is 58 PSIA. So I've drawn it out here. So um, at the inlet to the nozzle, notice we have a velocity. So those are not the stagnation conditions. So we're going to have to find those. And notice also that fortunately we were given the air in absolute uh, pressure, and, but the temperature is in Fahrenheit. So we're going to have to convert that because anytime we multiply and divide by a pressure or a temperature, it has to be absolute. So we're going to have to make sure we take care of that. So how do we solve this? Well, first of all, as usual, we have to make some assumptions. So we're going to assume that the air is an ideal gas with constant specific heats at room temperature. We're going to assume that the flow through the nozzle is steady, 1D, and isentropic. Then we look up the properties, and we're using English units here, so we have to be very careful but we'll do it anyway. So we have the uh, specific heat is 0.2404 BTUs per pound mass degree Rankine, which is the same thing. So I did the conversion, which turns out to be 6019 feet squared per second squared degree Rankine. And then uh, that should have been one right there. And then our gamma for air is 1.4. All right, so now we're going to check to see if the flow is choked. So we'll take our equation, which was where we have the uh, Mach number relations, and we set the Mach number equal to 1. So we have P0 over P star, and we plug in our numbers, 1.4 for gamma, and we get 1.8929. But like I said, I like to do the inverse of that. And we have that uh, P star over P0 is 0 0.5283. So that's our critical pressure ratio. It's not the pressure that we have. We're going to check it to see what it is to see if it's greater or less than 0.5283. Now, in this problem, we're not given P0. We're given the conditions at the inlet, which were not stagnation. So we're going to have to calculate P0. Well, to do that, we need to know the temperature. So we, we're going to use this uh, relation from thermo where the stagnation temperature equals the temperature, the actual temperature plus V squared over 2 Cp. And in this case, I have uh, the subscript I, and that refers to conditions at the inlet, which is what we have. We're given those. And we've got to convert temperature to uh, absolute, which is going to be Rankine in this case. So we plug in our numbers. And we get T0i is equal to uh, this here. And it looks like uh, I left out some numbers. So let's put, that's the number down here. So let's put, uh, we'll put 1580.1. So the, uh, the stagnation inlet temperature is 1580.1. And now we'll go back and we'll solve for our uh, pressure rate. We'll solve for the pressure. So uh, we have the isentropic relations. Uh, P0i is equal to this expression. So we'll plug in our numbers and we find that the uh, inlet pr uh, stagnation pressure is 151.6 PSIA. So now we can uh, calculate the ratio of the back pressure to the stagnation pressure. And that's right here. So we have, uh, in our case, we have a 100 PSI. This was what we have for part A. So the pressure ratio, 100 over 151.6, is 0.66. So that's greater than the critical pressure ratio of five, uh, 0.5283. So that means the flow is not choked. So now we can't use, we're going to have to use a different relation. So to get the mass flow rate, we need, uh, we could do it this way. We can look at 
rho VA at the throat. So I've got the subscripts T, T, T. So that means uh, we have rho VA at the throat. Now to get the density at the throat, we just use our equation of state. We have P over RT. And to get the temperature at the throat, we use our isentropic relation, which is this one right here. And we find that the temperature of the throat is equal to 1403.2. And then to get velocity, we use that same thermodynamic relation that we had at the inlet right here. So we'll solve this equation for velocity, and we get these terms right here. So we find that the velocity at the throat is 1459.3 feet per second. So now we can go to our uh, equ uh, equation for mass flow rate. And so we have P over RT is density. So we have density times the velocity of the throat times the area. So we plug all those numbers in. And then we, do, uh, we have to cancel out the units. So we know a pound force is equal to a slug foot per second squared, and when we cancel everything out, we find that the mass flow rate is equal to 0.467 slugs per second. So that was part A. In part A, the flow was not choked, so we had to do some more calculations. So now let's go to part B, where the uh, pressure was, uh, let me go back and see what it was. 58 PSI. Okay, so we know the stagnation pressure is 151.6, so we calculate the ratio and we got 0.383. This is below the critical pressure ratio, so the flow is choked and we have sonic conditions at, uh, at the exit. So now we can use this expression. We, we're going to have the maximum mass flow rate. So we can use this expression that we derived. So I'll put my uh, numbers in. And again, we have to use absolute, but we're given, we know absolute. So we'll put these in. And this is our expression right here. And so I go through and I'll calculate all the numbers and we'll put the units in. And so the units that are left over are 0.485 pound force, and then I just convert it. I know if pound force is equal to a slug foot per second squared, and everything cancels out so that we have a mass flow rate of 0.485 slugs per second. So um, when we get to the lab and we do this experiment for our converging nozzles for our tank discharge uh, experiment, we will we will test we will do a test to see if we have choke flow in the nozzle. And if we do, we'll use the uh, expression for the maximum mass flow rate. If it's any less than that, we'll have to use the other expressions. And this is a very typical way of how mass flow rates are measured, either in industry or in labs. Uh, when I was in graduate school, we, were, uh, we had a supersonic combustion wind tunnel. And we were, uh, first of all, we had to measure the mass flow rate going into the tunnel of the air. And this is exactly how we did it. We just knew what the uh, area of the entrance section was, and we measured pressures, and we could get the, uh, the Mach number from that. And then when we wanted to measure the mass flow rate of the fuel going into our combustion chamber, we had a little orifice, which we knew the size of, and we knew the upstream pressure and temperature, and that's how we measured the uh, mass flow rate. And that's how we're also doing it in lab. In lab, we have a calibrated orifice, uh, along with a way to measure the temperature and pressure in time. So um, that concludes the lecture for the converging nozzle. And that's all I have for today. Thank you.